Hi. Do you know how I said last week that we were gonna um, do the base for the dragon? We're not doing that because I lost like a uh, half week of work because I got food poisoning. So I'm behind on everything. Instead, we're gonna do something fun and easy and uh, fun and also easy. So how about we play with some old metal? And I, of course, I'm referring to bismuth. Bismuth is some amazing stuff. I love playing with it so very, very, very much. And if you have not, what are you doing? Go, go do it. Beautiful thing about bismuth is it melts at 540 degrees. I think that's 540 degrees. It might be 550 or 60, but I'm, I'm not sure. I think it's 540 degrees. <laughs> Meaning it is a heavy metal that you can melt on your stovetop. And as it cools, it naturally forms these amazing hopper crystals due to paramagnetism. And they are awesome and I love them. But they're also great for casting. And if you can get your temperatures right, you can actually oxidize the casting and you get those beautiful rainbow colors on the outside of your casting. So we might try that later. But first, I think we should make some crisps, which means we're gonna take this, literally fill it to the brim with bismuth, and we're gonna melt it down and see what happens. All right, we've achieved molten. So, first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of that skim on the surface, but I'm gonna take my temperature down to about 400 and... 400. We're gonna leave it at 400. How satisfying is this, by the way? Look at that mirror finish when you move it over. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, we have removed all of our slag. So, basically what we're gonna do is I'm gonna skim it one or two more times, even though it's not slag anymore. The slag is just the impurities leaving the metal. And after that, we're gonna just leave it, let it kind of start to solidify, because those crystals are gonna start forming on the surface. And the point of bringing your heat down, but not off, is that means that it's gonna be cooling very, very, very slowly. And the slower the cooling, the bigger the crystals. Theoretically, anyway. Actually, I'm lower on bismuth than I thought I was, so. <laughs> Should be able to get some nice crystals, but I don't think we're gonna get any monsters today, unfortunately. Now I'm gonna start pulling the little ones because I don't want them to interfere with the bigger ones. Like that. See, they broke apart. Eh, I'll show them afterward, I promise. Oh gosh, I need gloves. All right, this one isn't going as well. I think the reason is I brought my temperature a little too low. So we're gonna dump this out and see what we have on the inside and then start over. Yeah, that wasn't a very good one. We're gonna start over. But here are the ones we did get from that, and this is why I think we were too uh, low on the temperature. That is a result of very, very, very rapid cooling. We don't want rapid cooling, we want slow cooling. We did get a few nice ones, though. A few nice little ones, but we can do better. We can do better. This one actually is really nice. That's a pretty good one. But again, I want better. I expect more from me. Alrighty, take two. Oh yeah, that's way better. I've got it down to 480, and yeah, it, things are happening much slower, which is what we want. There we go, that's better. See that little square right there? finally getting them to form, which is good. That means they're growing really, really slow, like. All right, we just pulled this out, and I am going to break it down further so that we can isolate it, because all the walls, there's not really anything on there, but there's some good stuff deep down in there. So, let's do the thing where we break stuff. All right, now that is much better. So, you'll notice that the thing is way smaller. This isn't it, I was just demonstrating. There's a lot of the lower end, smaller crystals that I didn't feel like I needed to save, plus I can, you know, just melt them back down to make more crystals. This big long one was actually not as nice as I was hoping it would be, so I just opted to get rid of it, because again, we can make more with it. This right here was the indicator that it was time to dump it because this floated to the surface, which means there are big crystals growing down at the bottom. <laughs> that is a really, really nice one. But check this out. That right there 
is a beautiful crystal cluster. That right there is what you want to see. That is much better. Look how pretty. Oh, look how pretty. I love it. I love it. That one is a total keeper. I'm absolutely not melting that one back down. That right there is what you want to see. So, uh, let's do it again, I suppose. How about why not and stuff even. We're gonna melt the rest down to make more crystals, but figured it's gonna take a little bit to cool down, so we're gonna do something else as well. So, what we have right here is a plaster mold. There's a negative on the inside, made through the process of lost wax casting. I'm going to demonstrate how to do this, but I figured, uh, you know, let's just show you right off the bat what the end product looks like because I have this already here and I want to get rid of it because I've had it for a long time. Then it needs to cool down quite a bit before we can actually crack it out. So yeah, I figured I might as well do it now. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna take my torch and I'm gonna heat the inside. And that is basically just gonna make it so that the temperature difference isn't so wide that everything starts like bubbling. Because when uh, molten metal hits a surface that is room temperature, it like pops and bubbles and explodes and it's yeah it leads to a not very good mold or not mold but cast you know what i mean you know words words and stuff luckily the melting point is so low i don't really have to heat it a whole lot the heat from the torch will go down inside of there and that's pretty much good enough here goes and it's really that simple See how it's popping a little bit? It would be bubbling like nine times more than it is right now if I hadn't heated it up first. Like it literally like pops. And all of those pops translate into the cast. Honestly, I don't even remember what is in this mold. I made it so long ago. So this is gonna be interesting to find out. I, it's probably a shell, I think, probably. I don't know. I honestly have no idea. <laughs> so that bismuth is gonna take a while to cool and that bismuth is gonna take a little bit to, to melt. So I figured I might as well start demonstrating right now. We can get our mold made so it can be drying out and ready for whenever we need it. So we start by taking an item we want to make a cast of. I don't know why, but shells are just really, really good for this whole process. They are really, really good for casting. Anyway though, we take our item, and the first thing you need to do is make a mold of this item. There are a lot of different products you can use to, to make molds. My favorite is <laughs> cornstarch and 100% silicone caulk. You kind of just make it a dough and when it cures, you are left with really good, solid, reusable molds. And I love them, and I use them all the freaking time, and I love them. And it's, it's, I love them enough to say it twice. That's why I said it twice. Once you've achieved a mold, the next step is to fill it with melted wax. However you see fit in melting said wax is up to you. And once said wax is dry, you are left with a wax shell. This is the step we're gonna step into. I don't have, uh, a whole lot of wax on hand, so I can't really make any from scratch at the moment. I think an explanation is good enough for now. I mean, it, you, you get it. Make a mold, fill it with wax. There you go, it's, it's easy. Once you have achieved a wax cast, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is take plaster of Paris, fill a container like this, let it dry. Obviously not this container, because it's filthy. Let it dry, and what you will have afterward is a plaster mold with a wax shell inside. So, next thing you have to do after that is Melt the wax out. You can use an oven, you can use a torch, you can use a heat gun. Whatever you feel so inclined to use, just melt the wax out. And from there, you are ready to pour in your molten metal. And then once it's cooled and dried, you can smack it with a hammer. And the result is a fully metal seashell. All that being said, I'm going to go wash this container because it's actually like the perfect size. Go grab some plaster of Paris, and I'll be right back. And now we're just gonna add water. I don't think I have enough here. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. And once we have it mixed up, we're gonna take this, and once it starts to set up a little bit, we're gonna just poke it down right in there. See, it's gonna be floating for now, but 
I'll just keep close tabs on it. As soon as it starts to set up, we'll get it dipped in there. Crystals, round three. Here we go. So I'm trying something different with this one. I'm hoping we can get some nice big crystals out of this one from the bottom at the very least. I'm not expecting much on the top, but on the bottom, oh yeah. So what I'm doing is every five minutes, I am dropping it 10 degrees. Right now I'm on 450. And I'm gonna just keep doing that until I start to see the signs that I'm looking for, which is basically just like a rim of crystal shape. All right, I'm starting to wonder if I waited too long because I'm starting to see some tiny crystals forming on the surface. So I think now is the time to pour. Yeah, no, we, we called it right, I think. There's some good stuff in there. All righty, well, cool. All right, we've got that one uh, parsed down and I only got one that I was really, really, really happy with, but man, it's a good one. That is really nice. The rest were a little globby, which tells me I waited too long to pull it. So we're gonna do the same thing, except we're actually gonna pour it out, you know, a little faster. So one thing I like to do is I never know if it's too soon or too early, so I like to just go to both extremes and kind of work toward the middle afterwards. So I'm actually gonna pour this right now. I think I found the timing. There are some good big ones in there. <laughs> All right, I'll be back when they cool down. Now that is without a doubt the best one so far. Look at that. So hard to get all that color to capture. I'm sure you've seen some of the blue and purple, but there is just a rainbow on these crystals. Look at that one right there. That is really nice all the way around. All those other ones all by it. That's just good. That's just a good day. That right there is exactly what I was hoping for. Unfortunately, because I'm low in bismuth, this is about as big as I can do them. When I have more, I can make the pot deeper and therefore they give them more time to grow bigger, but yeah, I can right now. And I think this is set up now to where we can start trying to pop it out of there. And there it is. I'm gonna carve a little funnel right here down to the wax because it'll act as a funnel. And now that I have it to this point, I'm gonna use a heat gun to both dry it and melt the wax. Let us now move our attention to this right now. Mm. Let's start by melting this down. Isn't it is melted? I'm gonna heat this. I can pretty much guarantee this one's gonna be a little more explosive than the last one. Yup, there it is. Kind of what I expect. You know that thing I was telling about earlier, about how you make sure that it's warm on the inside, otherwise it'll blow, uh, you know, and pop and all that other fun stuff. But yeah, this is what I was talking about. But see, here's the problem. Uh, I normally would take it home and um, bake it in the oven to dry it out, and I am impatient and did not want to do that. And this is what happens when you're impatient. Honestly, it should still be fine. I don't know, we'll, we'll find out, I guess. So here's the thing. I also have another mold that I have a cool idea that I want to do, so we're going to do that as well. So, while I have all of the metal ready to go, let's pour this one too, so they can be cooling down simultaneously. I'm going to pour this one on the floor, just in case the spattering is bad. So I did another batch while I was waiting for that to cool, and oh my gosh. Look at that little thing. That is so cool. Here's the big piece. Color on that is outstanding. That is a really nice one. Heck yeah, yeah. Gotta love it. Alrighty, number one is cool enough to come out now. Wow, even with all the popping, that cast beautifully. So, I'm gonna get this all cleaned off because there's a bunch of, that's all uh, plaster attached to it, but that's gonna be beautiful. So, be right back. There it is. And it looks awesome, and I love the fact that it maintained the actual crystal structure of the bismuth. That came out awesome, but it doesn't end here. So because it's inside the mold, it will not oxidize and get all colorful the way that the crystals do. So my plan is to try and oxidize them. So let's see if we can do that. The trick is being way too careful. <laughs> Oh, let's do this one as well.
Alrighty. Well, I've done all the playing with metal I'm going to do today. So, here they are. Alrighty guys, well I think that is going to do it for this one. I would highly recommend that everyone plays with bismuth at some point in their life. My lighting is horrible, it's so sad because these have so much color in person but the camera is just not cooperating. Actually one sec. If I bring my brightness way down it kind of helps a little bit but man there's so much more color in person, it's so frustrating. I kind of have a cool idea revolving around casting in bismuth and rainbows and I think it would be really fun to do a carving and then cast it in bismuth and then oxidize it, like purely with that in mind. Let me know what you guys think. I think that would be really, really cool. Give me some ideas down in the comments. Also, if you guys would like, um, I'm super low on bismuth right now, but it's something I love playing around with. I need to buy more anyway. When you have a deeper pot, you can make much, 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 much larger crystals. This was probably our best one today, but when I actually have a full stock of bismuth, this is the kind of crystals we can make. That one crystal is almost the same size as this entire cluster. <laughs> also, sorry if I seem less bouncy than normal. Uh, I'm exhausted, I'll be honest. I'm very, very tired. Anyway though, guys, I think that's gonna do it for this one. I hope y'all enjoyed, and I will see you next time, where we hopefully will be working on the base for the dragon. If not, that'll be next next time. I don't, I'm not sure yet. I don't know the current timeline.